Welcome along to Tweet Street Scotland Occupied, home of the satirical satire. I'm Simon Bridges, aka Peter. Um, I've not got a co-host today, so it's straight in about it with our guest. Um, our guest is is absolutely he, kind of a run off his feet, as we've, we've just been speaking about. Um, after his uh, explosion onto the, the scene in debate night um, last week. Um, it's Ewan McLeod, I'll go straight down to it. Hi Ewan, it's nice to have you on. Um, thanks very much for agreeing to be on. I know you've got your hires and what have you. So just tell us a wee bit about you. Yeah, no worries at all. Uh, it's great to be here. Obviously, um, since last week, it's been it's been pretty non-stop in terms of, uh, of you know, the, the coverage I've had, which is insane. Um, I definitely wasn't expecting to get such a reaction from, uh, from, from people online. Uh, in a sense of after what had been said, but you know, it's been it's been really positive. Um, the 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 people that I've spoken to ever since it happened. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's been good. It's been good. Oh, it's it's it's, it's refreshing to hear. As I said, uh, I've been keeping my wee eye on your Twitter feed, um, and just the sounds, just the, the messages that you've been putting out on response to your initial uh, explosion with debate night. Um, it's been really refreshing to, to hear what. Like, and as I said this uh, just before we started recording, for the younger generation, and I don't mean that in a, a, a negative way, I mean that like you've got people that are interested in Scotland and the betterment of it. Um, Aye. You came away with some, you came away with a cracker on debate night. It was, you, you said that the union was unsalvageable, um, which is a, a, a pretty damning indictment for um, somebody that, that's grew up through no having a Tory government elected in Scotland. Yeah. But forced upon it for for the south and a lot of the things that were mentioned. So just go into it. Tell us a wee bit about it. Tell us your thoughts on it. Yeah, no. So obviously, um, from pretty much day dot, I've I've been um, grown up in what's been a conservative administration, um, and from what I, what I've seen, it's just it's it's not what Scotland wants. You know, we're we're saddled with these Tory governments that none of us actually vote for um, through Westminster. And it's, it just it doesn't work for Scotland in that sense. You know, we, we don't have the power to do what's right for our own people. Um, you know, we're, we're forced upon the, the Westminster government. And it's, it's just not, not the situation we need to be in right now in a sense of, you know, making sure that we have the best for our own in Scotland. Aye. Aye. It's, I mean, it's common sense. It's common Aye. sense. Yeah, that's um, it. And it kind of uh, it, it shines through. It doesn't matter what generation you're, um, when you've seen some of the things that, generations above me have seen and witnessed it's, it's the same thing on repeat um and it's good to have fresh eyes kind of a observing the same sort of things the same, yeah. same issues um what sort of things have you been involved in before you go on to debate night um so I'm, I'm quite involved with stuff in my school politics wise so just the night before debate night i've been on um i've been on itv talking about uh, the, the local council elections. Obviously, this is my first first chance to be able to vote in any election. Um, but as well, I've been I've been involved with politics, not actively involved, but sort of watching from the sidelines in a sense of, you know, and making my own political opinions over the past couple of years. Um, and, I, you know, I'm, I'm happy to get involved now, um, ever since debate night, it's sort of given me a platform and, and able to, you know, have, have my voice heard when it comes to politics now. It's it's good, as I say, it is. It's it's refreshing because we want to have. I mean, the amount of people I've say that we we want an independent Scotland. It's it's not for us. It's for our kids and our grandkids and generations yeah. yet to come. Um, and here we've got a younger generation coming through and identifying a lot of the things that have been said that have gone before. Um, now you're going to be voting for the first time in the the local council elections. How do you feel about it? I'm looking forward to it. I think it's I think it's going to be a good experience. Um, you know, it's it's finally my first first chance to have a have a say when it comes to politics. You know, with uh, obviously a, a lot better having the reduced voting age in Scotland as well. You know, it, it allows for people my age to have a say when it comes to politics and not have to you know rely on the older generations to make decisions for us, which is quite good. That's, it's, it's it's good. We're a couple of days away from voting day. Um, I know that, as you said before, you're busy with your hires and that you're, you're, you're going to be busier than next week will as a result of the debate night because you've got another yeah. few things lined off, up off the bat if, after, after this, haven't you? Yeah, quite a few things lined up. Um, another podcast and all that to go on. So, okay, so It's good. I've seen some of the ones that, that you're, you're going to be on and these are things that 
um, before I even started doing this, these were the places that I used to go to for my independence news yeah. and, and, and and things about the yes movement. Um, because that I don't hate it. I'm a yes. I always always yeah. have been. Always will be. Um, we've came up against a a Brexit against uh, the electorate's uh, desires. The electorate of Scotland's desires. You've already mentioned about Tory administrations that we don't vote for here in Scotland. Um, what about what's your thoughts on um, the current political scene with independence parties? I think with independence parties, it, it works out quite well. Um, obviously, the SNP being the main, main one in Scotland, but as well with other independence parties, it works to to create that sort of majority that we require to get to push us over the finish line when it comes to independence. Um, I'm I'm not opposed to other independence parties in, in the slightest. Um, I think I think they're definitely definitely the way forward in a sense of you know putting up a strong opposition against you know with the, with the conservatives and labor all banding together in an attempt to stop stop the independence movement i think it's definitely what's needed to sort of push us over the finish line right um so given that then um you'll be aware of the stv voting system that's that's in the, the local council elections and the for what for what you're the sounds you're making sounds as if you'll be voting for your book sorry I'm saying, for what you've said, uh, you'll be aware it's STV voting in the yes. local council election. And Aye. with the sounds of what you've said, it's the sounds as if, as if you're going to be voting until you book. Yes? Aye. Yeah, Aye. pretty much. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, what's your book point? Oh, just anyone who isn't pro-independence. Um, who isn't. You know, just... Keep keep going until you run out of both candidates that support independence and, and what's best. Um, I think I think that's going to be it for me. Aye, aye. I mean, it's it's best for it's best for Scotland. It, it really is. It's the most sensible thing. Um, a lot of people um, are having conflicts of interest with what's the message that's been going out because. I mean, you've had some SNP leaflets went out that says only vote SNP one and two and from no other party, which yeah. again that only lets in unionists and, and exactly it, it's not a, it's not a sensible um, suggestion. Um, so even you and saying it as well, vote to you both pro independence. That's it. Um, what's your hopes going forward then, Ewan? Go forward. Um, obviously, I, I agree with the fact of, you know, obviously we're, we're in a bit of financial trouble at the moment with, with COVID and all that. But I would, I would hope to see an independence referendum come 2023, of which, you know, people my age would be able to vote in. Um, at, at the moment, the, the sort of consensus within the people that I speak to is a lot of them are open to independence. They're quite, they're quite happy to go for these progressive parties that are forward thinking with, you know, the benefit system and all that. Compared to the Tories who seem to be obviously very stuck in their ways with old old ways of thinking in politics. Um, and I don't think that appeals to, to my generation in that sense. Hi. Um, have you seen that there's a, there's a wee album, a book on the go that's talking about independence? Have you been aware of it? Have you had the, a look at it by any chance? I've not actually. I've I've not seen it. No, it's um, again. It's like in coming up to two thousand and fourteen, there was the wee blue book launched, and it was one of yeah. these things. It was a go to, um, that people started getting excited about. I mean, with yeah. the, the mention of the possible uh, referendum in twenty twenty three, do you think that that's going to go ahead? I hope it does. I, I genuinely do hope it goes ahead. Um, I think. You know, it, there's there's no time better than the present for for making change, um, and that's the thing. If we if we keep saying, oh, you need to wait for the the, the recovery from COVID and all that, it's like we're gonna keep pushing it back. So, and it's not gonna happen. So we're, there's no time like the present. I'd say. Hi. Uh, what's your thoughts on the current situation? Obviously, we've got. Um, we're tied into this union. We've got Boris Johnson and Partygate, as you had mentioned, um, or had been mentioned on uh, debate night about yeah. Partygate. Um, what was your thoughts on that? 
I mean, I think it's um, I think it's ridiculous. You know, the fact that we've got a prime minister who's who's actually been handed a fine alongside members of his cabinet as well. I think it's I think it's disgraceful the fact they think they can still lead this country. Well, I say lead this country. You know, they they don't really do much in the grand scheme of things so far. Um, but the fact that they think they can just ride it out and that it's not going to undermine people's confidence in democracy. You know, it's the fact that they don't have the integrity to say. You know we've we've messed up here we're going to stand down for it. it it truly does for myself as well undermine um the confidence in democracy and a lot of people i've spoken to as well would say that they wouldn't vote for them again because of that the fact that they've got the bare face cheek to stand there and say we're just going to ride it out and we're not going to do anything about it uh, I don't mind. I don't mind. my i think my theory is if, uh, i've got a brilliant new strategy which is to make so many gaffes that nobody knows which one to concentrate on so they cease to be they newsworthy. Cease to be, they, they cease to be newsworthy. You, you completely outgeneral the media in that way, and they they, they despair. They despair, and 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 yet, and so what you do, you, you 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 they leave you alone. You shell them. You pepper the media. What you do is you got to really, you got you, you got to pepper their positions with so many gaffes that they're confused. It's like chaff. It's like a helicopter throwing out chaff, and then you steal on quietly, and drop your depth charges wherever you want to drop them. I uh, I mean I think. Um... It's it's pathetic how, if you have a look at the Scottish Tories, how Douglas Ross has flip-flopped from oh, yeah. asking for him to go, then getting him yeah. his batting. And a lot of people are saying because of the war in Europe, um, the, the situation in Ukraine, um, that you need to give him, you don't want to change the, the uh, Prime Minister yeah. during, during a war and in war times and, and stuff like that. But it's been done before, as we know. But Exactly, yeah. I mean, the... The, the Scottish Tories' position coming into this, these local council elections, um, I mean, they, they must be having a nightmare on the doors because they're, they're just flip-flopping. It's, it's, they want them away. I mean, even in, if you look over the border, um, the reception on the doors, even this this latest thing with the, the minister um, who was had to resign for watching pornography while in the House of Commons. Yeah. I mean... They're not having a good time, the Tories, aren't they? All? Yeah, that's it. They, which they, which they is great, set... by the way. Exactly, that's it. I mean, they don't set themselves up for success, but in a sense, that, that works out a lot better for us. Um, you know, there's no there's no continuity with them, at least when, when you look to the parties in Scotland that are actually wanting what's best for us. We've got a, we've got a plan. There's continuity there, and people know what they're voting for. Um, and it's not it's not going to be back and forth and changing every so often. So. Aye, it's... Um... Ah, it's just more of the same in Scotland for the Tories. <laughs> Boris Johnson has spent his first night in prison. He was sentenced to two and a half years for hiding assets to avoid paying debts. <laughs> yeah. um, right, no, let, let's let's try and uh, before we have a wee look at your your the, the clip on uh, that went viral um, on the yeah. uh Let's have a wee take it easy a wee bit. So when you're no talking about politics and you're no studying for your hires, what does you do? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm quite into go, go out with my pals. Um, I'm, I'm quite social within with uh, within my group of mates at school, as well. I'm quite into mountain biking, so where I stay, there's some great mountain bike trails. So I'm, I'm out there most weekends, um, get getting out and just just being out, uh, just away from the house. That's about it. Keep, keep them busy then. Keep them busy. Yeah, that's it. Keep keep yourself busy. Um, yeah. Well, we're just coming into the summer weather, so hopefully, without taking too much time away for you prepping for your hires and what have you. Yeah. Um, you get the nice days or the l nice long nights where you can get out and do a wee bit of relaxing because you need to have that to, so that you, your brain functions perfectly. It's, it's yeah. You're probably be best aware because you, you do all this kind of <laughs> stuff. Um, right, I'm going to play this wee, this wee short clip and we'll talk about it yeah. now because I want to get to know how you manage to get in there, but we'll get that after the clip, all right? Yeah, cool. Right, so... For myself, I would agree that the union is unsalvageable. I've grown up in, in a majority of a Conservative administration um, with the farce that was Brexit of Scotland being dragged out of the EU against its will. And then as well with the Partygate scandal, Westminster has been the face of the union. And for young people growing up in Scotland like myself, I've seen that the union is broken. They're not doing what's best for Scotland. I, I need to let you know. Uh, when I heard that, I don't watch BBC, right? Um, yeah. Uh -huh. It's one of these things that through the years you get 
kind of a fed up way the mis report. Aye, made, that's it. Right. So um when I heard the clip, I was actually cheering like a lunatic, right? I'm like, <laughs> on yourself, well done. Because I had somebody I was talking to on the, the last recording that we done with author Ron Cully, and he was yeah. telling us about to get employed in the BBC, the day like a check, and it used to be like they put a Christmas tree on your your thing with your application if you had, if if you had any leanings towards out with the union, right? All right, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so it, it's a hard place to kind of uh, infiltrate. Yeah. So uh-huh. How did you manage? Tell us about how you go into debate night. What was what was your what was the journey there? Um, so it was originally, it was suggested to me by uh, one of my politics teachers at high school, actually. He'd said, obviously, that it was coming to it was coming to the town. So I went in and uh, I found out the application online. I was, I was actually really honest with my answers. So it was asking questions on Scottish independence. You know, obviously, I was answering yes to them, political parties, leanings and all that sort of stuff. And I was, I was quite surprised the fact of I was, I was very open that I, I was very much against the union, yet still got a phone call back to be part of the audience. Um, right. But it, it, it was very much you got a, you got a bit of a grilling on on your political standings, like when you were when you were speaking to them. And so on the day then, when you were going in, did you know what you were going to say, or were you prepared to speak, or had they asked you if you had a question before you went in? Um, so they asked us if we had questions before. Um, what, what they'd suggested is if we had questions, we wanted to ask to submit them before. Um, so there was four four questions that were picked beforehand. That we're going to be definitely in the in the live recording um, to sort of structure the debate. But then at the same time, they told us if you wanted to if you wanted to speak, then just put your hand up, um, and and then obviously they'd come to you to to weigh in on it. But when I went in, I wasn't actually planning on saying anything um, because obviously I, I was there for more of the experience. But when the the question on the union came up, a lot of people were talking about how you know. The older people were talking about how the union union's great and we're better together and all that and I was like right well we'll, we'll challenge that we'll go for a, we'll go for a younger person's point of view and I think that's I think that's what a lot of people found quite good was in a sense of like with the BBC I think because they knew that I was 16 they expected me to go in there and not really say anything right <laughs> but then when that when that topic came up I, I thought right well I might as well put my viewpoint across from from a younger person because it was it was in the audience, there was barely anyone under the age of 20, I'd say. Um, and we are so glad you did. We are so glad you did. Um, right. So you knew what the, the, the four questions were. Did, did, did you have any potential questions that you had to send in that, that, that may have got asked that never? Um, I never sent any questions no, in. No, no. Um, no I, ne- I never sent anything in. Right. Um, what sort of response if any did you get immediately after the show um after the show it was actually a really good response so there was folk that were sitting in front of us in the front row and um one of the gentlemen turned around and he shook my hand actually and told me that i'd, I'd said i said it very well and that it was good to hear from the younger generation when it came to the topics of independence so i was i was quite happy with that and there was there was a fair few people even um even this week alone going around the town that have actually you know stopped me and spoke to me as well um, and then, yeah, obviously following the show, there was there was about three or four people from the audience that, that came up over and spoke to me after. Um, I will. Uh, it's because I know, well, as I say, I've been following your Twitter feed. I know what the next day, what, what sort of response yeah. and that it's that I've been coming through there. But immediately afterwards, that like, I would have been expecting. Did you get any phone calls or any any messages to say, oh? Well done from people that, that knew you outside of outside of the one the, 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 the BBC that night. Yeah, so I had um, I had quite a lot of my, my close friends who'd been watching it, um, and, and then a, a lot of my teachers at school as well had seen it. You know, people at my work, um, they they'd all seen it as well, and that that was it. I, I did get quite a few messages um, off of friends and family, friends and family that live you know up in Edinburgh and over in Glasgow and that. Who had mentioned to me that they'd seen it, so that that was quite good. Aye, aye, good. As I say, there, I've been following it keenly on Twitter since we yeah. since we kind of uh, made arrangements um, yeah. that this was going to be happening. Um, as it's one of these things that 
Again, it doesn't. Have, I only, I only cheer on the BBC when Scotland are playing, right? Yeah, and if, if they score it. a goal or a try or something like that, that's the only time uh-huh. I cheer. But when I watched that, I was, uh, I must admit, I gave you, a, I gave you a right wee cheer. Um, right. So we know what you're going to be doing over the next kind of a wee while. Yeah. All things going well with your hires. Um. In an ideal world. What does Ian McLeod day become? Um, I'm hoping after after I finish my hires to look to go to university and study criminology, um, and do that for a couple of years, and then eventually, hopefully, join um, hopefully join the police, and then further afield from that, um, look into potentially going to politics later on in life. Aye, aye, good. I mean, I, I wish you every I wish you every success. First of all, in your hires, you need to. Um, make sure you're no interrupted too much. No, you're going to be busy all the next yeah. week. Um, <laughs> don't get interrupted too much. Make sure yeah. you, you're your main focus done. Um, yeah. But I, as you say, embrace the platform that you've 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 gave yourself. Um, it's no anybody else. It wasn't anybody else's words. It's, it's you. Um, and now you've got an interest in Scotland. You've got an interest in trying to make yourself better and and be the same. Yeah. Um, Make the country a wee bit better. So um, I look forward to seeing what's coming uh, over the over the next wee while for you. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. <laughs> right. Um, moving on. Boris Johnson. Do you see him still being in charge? Do you think there's going to be another general election called? And do you think I hope so. Boris Johnson will um, be in charge for it. I, I I hope there will be another general election. I hope that Boris Johnson isn't going to be the prime minister. But from the way it's going, unfortunately, it looks like that. You know, he's 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 got the effect of you know getting getting the Tories to rally round him in Westminster. And I, I don't think that's right because it, it shows the Tories' mindset down there as well. Of right, okay, we we can tell that what he's done is wrong, but we're going to rally round him anyway for the sake of you know he's given us our jobs in the cabinet and all that sort of stuff. I don't think that's right. I think politicians should have the integrity to realise when someone who's in charge has screwed up and that the right thing to do would be to get rid of him. Aye. Uh, I think, as I was alluding to you earlier, I think on the doors down south, he's, he's getting a mauling, which which is making his position an even more danger as far as... Because the Tories yeah. will do anything to stay in power. Um, oh, yeah. As much as some of the Tory uh, donors may like the Prime Minister, it's, uh, it's what the... The people in the doors and, and and how it's going to actually come across and tries transpire and votes, yeah. um, come these these uh, local council elections. Um, I believe that there's also going to be a general election called, which means that that would probably put put paid to any possible uh, referendum that the the Scottish government might be able to call. Would you agree yeah. on that? I. Th- yeah, I think I think if, if we get if we can get a general election and we can get the Tories out as much as as much as it might not happen, I I, I hope I hope that people down south and in Scotland would realise that the Conservative government in in the time that they've been in have done more damage to the UK than ever have done more damage to this country as a whole than ever you know England Scotland Wales Northern Ireland everything, and hopefully if we can get them out then it opens the door for the Scottish government to pave the way for an independence referendum. I, I do genuinely hope that happens. Um, so if, if a, a general election was called, would you know we'll be calling for a, a plebiscite for, for the Scottish um, government then? Sorry? Would you know be calling for a plebiscite um, for the Scottish government um, if it was a general election? Uh, what would you mean by that? So so a plebiscite is where the, the, the elect are asked, are asked to vote at that point um, to make Scotland that's based on Scotland being an independent country returning um, a, a Scottish government based on being independent. Yeah, I would. Um, I, I would. I would definitely support that. Cool. Um, I mean, it's 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 all sounding good for for independence and for for yeah. um, try to get Scotland to be, be an independent country. Um, realistically, how long do you think it, it will take? Is do you think, well, obviously, you've got a belief that it will happen. So, realistically, how long do you think it will be then, you? Um, realistically, well, ideally, it would be 
but by the end of uh, by the end of you know 2024, hopefully, if we get that referendum in 2023. But if that isn't the case, I would I would hope to see us independent within at least the next ten years. Within the next ten years, right? Yeah. So hopefully, we can some of us Aldarians can can see that time out. That's it. Hopefully. <laughs> What's your thoughts on the current situations with politics? We'll have a wee mention of, right, the Gender Recognition Act. Just yes or no? I I, I, I would agree with it, yes. You would agree with it in its current form, uh, the current format the government are trying to introduce it? I think, yeah, yeah, I would, I would say so. Right. Okay. There's still much more to do. One more thing, so there can be no divide. Trans women are women, trans men are men. So I commit once again today that the government will work hard to ensure that the Gender Recognition Bill becomes an act. And I ask you to challenge us just as you rightly should to make sure that we make the progress as fast as we can. But once again, have a great time and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Okay. Um, so that, that would be uh, no, no gender recognition, just, just a, a case of on a self-ID basis. Yeah, I think in, in a sense of, you know, we're we're moving towards being a progressive country. I think I think people should have the the right to decide what they what what feels right for them. Um, I, th- I think you know if we're, if we're going to be a progressive democracy, then we need we need that to be in place. Um, to to be there, right? And so that would be allowing um, people who identify out of their sex to to access women's safe spaces, women's prisons. Um, I think I think when it comes to that, there needs to be slightly more thought in a sense of, you know, we can't exactly be doing that. I I, I totally agree with people, you know, um, identifying as whatever they'd like, but in a sense of, there needs to be thoughts on that. I, I, there definitely does need to be a bit more work there when it comes to the, you know, uh, women's safe spaces and women's prisons. Um, definitely. Aye, uh, look, I mean, it, it, it's causing a wee bit of a, a stushy because, like we'd said about Brexit, Scot- Scotland overwhelmingly voting to, to remain in the, the yeah. EU and dragged out against their will. The polls that are coming back are showing that the gender recognition in the form that the, the government wished, wished to introduce it, uh, the Gender Recognition Reform Bill, that the electorate are, are against the, the wishes of the government. So I think some thought yeah. mm-hmm. definitely needs to be reoccurred because there's there's some safeguarding issues as well for, for oh, yeah. the uh-huh. younger generation. Yeah. Um, and this of late with the puberty blockers, um, what's, what, what's a woman to you? Oh, um... Really not sure, in all fairness, I'm not. <laughs> um, oh. I mean, I think I think a woman to me would obviously be, you know, that I, I I wouldn't put any labels on it. Would would be an equal to myself, um, you know, just a, another person that is the same as myself, obviously just of the opposite gender. Right. So a man can be a woman then. Um. I, <laughs> I believe that if, if if they want to identify as that, then that that that's totally fine. Oh. Um, if, if that's their own choice, then we should we should agree with that. But um, I don't think we're really in a place to say what people can and can't be. Obviously, there should be there should be thought behind it in a sense of without people being too ridiculous with it. But I, th- I think definitely that people should be allowed their own sort of self recognition. Well, I mean, like, I'm I'm a believer in biology. Like, yeah. So I, it's it's a case of if you're born, you're, nobody's born in the wrong body. Um, yeah. If somebody wants to identify as something, that's entirely up to them. But to try yeah. and have everybody else affirm that 
then that's an ideological uh, uh, situation that, that I don't subscribe to. I mean, yeah, uh-huh. the adults can do whatever they whatever they do and uh, whatever they want and please, but when it comes oh, yeah. to um, these things that have been forced upon the rest of the population. I mean, that's, 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 I don't think that that's fair, but anyway, yeah. that's for, a, that's for another day. Right. Well, that's us out of, out of time for the day. Yeah. So Ewan, thanks very much for joining in the zone tweet street. Um, all the best for the future. Use the platform that you've, that you've gave yourself, uh, as we've said, and hopefully I'll be seeing your face a lot more when it comes to Scotland being independent. Um, good luck in your hires. And That's the hope. Aye, and thanks very much for joining us, young man. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right, so that's it for Tweet Street Scotland Occupied. For you in the cloud, for the satirical saltire, good night. <laughs>